Hi, good morning and welcome to today's Products in Focus. So, overnight we had some more data come out of China, which was a, a slight disappointment, but now it's looking like they might be doing uh, more capital ratio changes and more rate cuts in China. So even though the data came out a little bit um, below expectations, um, we have seen some of the Chinese equity markets actually tick up. And on the back of that, you've seen the Australia 200 and some of the uh, Hong Kong markets also go up. So bad news is good news at this adage. So the US 30 actually down from uh, its session highs yesterday uh, to move into positive territory this morning. Most equity markets are at the top end of their range already, uh, but this is looking a little bit like it could be turning into a very, very steep um, symmetrical triangle formation, which means we might get a breakout at one direction or the other. It's still forming right now, so it's not worth adding it on there. Um, but certainly you've got these highs here, and then you've got these higher lows, and then lower highs right here. Uh, so we'll see how things pan out later on today. We're still waiting for a bullish crossover in the MACD, which is yet to materialise. So that's the uh, US there. And moving on to the UK 100, very similar pattern potentially forming here with 6073 still being the potential support, similar MACD, so we've not quite got the crossover as of yet. Um, and if we have a look at the economic data, there's not a huge amount else left to come out apart from at 10 uh, a.m. today, we've got um, uh, Eurozone uh, GDP. And then we fast forward on the Wednesday, there's actually very, very little on Wednesday. It's not until you get into Thursday. You've got more Chinese data, you've got CPI, Bank of England, NPC minutes, interest rate announcement for the UK, which will remain the same, and employment data then followed by our non-farm payrolls, uh, not non-farm payrolls, our uh, weekly petroleum data, which is actually coming out on Thursday at the moment. So moving on to Japan 225, it's actually off slightly as um, that, uh, that kind of uh, import figure that China came out with. If we just have a look here, that import figure came in really bad. Um, if we just go on to Tuesday right there, uh, you can be able to see where we were. Um, it was expected to be minus 8%, it came in at minus 13.8%, and obviously China and Japan are, uh, are big in there together, so that's why we've seen quite a strong sell-off in Japan, 55. Now, dollar yen's actually had a bit of a bounce this morning, um, jumping from 119 all the way up to 185, so that's kind of interesting. But it does look that 17,496 is going to be the potential support level to be aware of on Japan 25. So looking at uh, dollar yen, bouncing nicely there of 119, it did it yesterday, did it again so far this morning. Started the dollar has been all over the shop to be honest. So the dollar is actually advancing against um, the Japanese yen, but if we well, we'll be looking at the other FX pairs in a minute, but. I can already see on my other screen that uh, GBP, USD and Euro dollar have had a bounce in the opposite direction. So dollar has gained versus the yen, but then has lost versus the sterling and uh, the euro, um, which is completely opposite picture to what we saw yesterday. Crude oil dropping 3% again yesterday. Um, same usual stuff, global slowdown, um, oil production fears, uh, as in oversupply. Uh, you've got 43.30 and then around about $42 be the next potential support. In fact, I'm just going to get rid of that one. Uh, you're probably looking around about $42 as being the next potential support level uh, and $45.85 being potential resistance. Looking at gold, gold's done nothing yesterday. Uh, getting, we've got, uh, we should be having a golden cross in the moving averages, which should be bullish, uh, but it's not adding that much extra momentum. As we discussed yesterday, you know, it's still about uh, on the 17th of September. We've got the FOMC session, and uh, some traders still thinking that after Friday's non farm payrolls figure kind of coming in below expectations, that there's a lot of big questions and kind of fresh doubt over the prospect of raising rates in September or not. Um, there's a lot of arguments to have it, there's a lot of arguments not to have it. Obviously, the state of the world economy is a big one at the moment. Um, but with China no longer being able to be the uh, kind of global shock absorber that it once was, uh, the US still want to have an option to uh, to cut at some point in the future. So they're looking to try and raise rates sooner rather than later, and just to have that initial lift off. And I think the markets are kind of pricing in that 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 potential eventuality. But um, there are still a number of traders who are positioning themselves that that's not the case. And if you're looking at something like gold right now, gold is giving you. Um, indications that they are expecting that there'll be something coming in September and that's why gold is, is continuing to drop off ever since we had that 24th of August uh, stock crash over in China uh, we had that initial massive spike in gold as everybody's going well they're never going to they're never going to raise rates now and that's just been slowly dropping every single session pretty much uh, to the point where we are just now so uh, not a great formation almost like a kind of a head and shoulders formation we've got a neck and that you've got the shoulder the neck and then the other shoulder and normally when you've got a break 
break of this neckline, which would be round about right here. Uh, that should be indicative that there could be a technical break lower than where we are right now. So moving on to Euro dollar and GBP USD. So Euro dollar uh, off the session highs, uh, bouncing off that 21 period SMA. One spot 11 still being a potential support, which also coincides with the 55 period SMA. Um, but this is already looking like a little bit of an ugly candle, but the fact that it's quite far off the session highs, uh, just selling off as we speak actually. Um, so still in positive territory, but only just. And then if we finish up with GBP USD, uh, Sterling had a, a decent rally yesterday. It's a follow through with another decent start to the day already, but uh, but we are away from the session lows. One spot 54.24 is the next potential uh, resistance level to be aware of for GBP USD. I can see that slow stochastic has been um, quite oversold up until this point. We've not yet broken above that 20% level, so the technical signal from the slow stochastic to uh, to provide bullish momentum has yet to come. But we've already had two decent day candles, so that was a bullish engulfing pattern that we had there yesterday. Be interesting to see how things pan out today for the sterling. Um, so that gives you a bit of an idea of where we are. Nothing really exciting macro data wise until Thursday, where there's a whole host of data. Make sure you keep your eye on the chart form and make insights part of your layout going forward. And join us again tomorrow to find out what happened next.